Sorry, headphone users. <laughs> Look at you, you old bi lingual king. I was gonna say bisexual. <laughs> that too. Welcome to another reading vlog. This is my final week before I go back to work on Monday. So I figured we'd do like a little cute reading vlog for the weekend since I'm not going to be able to do like any reading starting next week. I thought I was getting to go to a school age program because that's what I just assumed because I've been in school age since September. So I just assumed that they would move me to the same age group. Nope, I have to go back to toddlers and I am like the worst at diapers because I always put them on backwards and then I have to take them off again and I just like, ugh, I can't do diapers. But here we are going back to the toddler age group, but it's only from 12.30 to 5 for Monday to Wednesday because Canada Day is on Thursday and then Friday we start a new schedule. So I'm kind of hoping that they put me in like the preschool room, but I definitely that that's gonna happen because there's a placement student in the preschool room there who's actually in my program but I don't have to do placement because I have so much experience that's a whole nother story but I get to meet someone in my program which is interesting besides the point it basically means that I'm going to be with toddlers for the whole summer and I don't like that age group like I like them they're cute they're adorable but they wear diapers and I don't do well with that but like I said 12 30 to 5 is lunchtime nap time and pick up so maybe I will get away with it but I'll probably have to do a lot of diapers when they wake up from nap time which is gonna suck unless somebody else in the room wants to you know do that for me because I can't but this leads me to another situation that is going down for my placement. I start my placement on July 26th because we have to do our third placement. We're not allowed to plar it, which is what they call basically getting out of doing placement because you have prior experience. Mine starts on July 26th and we're supposed to like email where we have placement to like introduce ourselves, say hello, set up an orientation date. I emailed them two days ago and I was like, hey, like I'm Jay, just wanted to set up a orientation date, what's up? And they were like, mm, we don't have any record of you coming, like what are you talking about? Are you sure it's here? So I sent her the contact information I was given, which was her contact information. She's like, oh yeah, well I don't actually work here anymore, but I was under the impression that only one student was coming for placement and like it's not your name and I know who it is because me and this other person told each other where we were going and we were like shocked that we were at the same place because usually it's like one student per placement so we were like okay that's weird whatever and this whole thing came from me messaging this other girl being like hey have you emailed them yet like I haven't done it should I do it and she was like yeah they emailed me like a couple days ago like you didn't get anything and I was like no and she's like oh maybe you should email them so I did and turns out I don't even exist to them. So I emailed my field placement specialist and I was like, hey, like, is there a mistake? Am I not supposed to be going here? Blah, blah, blah. And she was like, um, no, there's no mistake. We had uh, talked to the previous supervisor and they said like they would support our students. And I was like, okay, well, I just was emailing with the previous supervisor and she has no recollection of this and says that she didn't know I was coming and that means that the newest supervisor who took her place also probably doesn't know I'm coming so like can you figure this out it's been two days and um haven't heard anything so I don't even know if I have a placement which it's like a month away literally almost a month because it's June 25th right now and it's not till July 26th but I go back to work on Monday so I need to set up an orientation date but like I can't do that if I don't know where I'm going and like my schedule and like it would have been perfect because I could have gone in the mornings because I don't work till 12 30 so like it would have worked out fine but now I don't know where I'm going so my whole thing is screwed and I'm just not having a good time but I only have eight more weeks of this program and then I'm free and I don't have to worry about anything anymore and I'll have my degree and my diploma and it'll be wonderful magical love that and then I go back to my program with my little school age children my kindergartners who don't wear diapers on August 30th so I am very excited the placement is July 26th to August 20th and then I go back to the toddlers for a week and then I get to go back to my babies so which are not babies they're kindergartners so they're like five six so I love that age group way more than 
babies, toddlers, and I don't even know what my placement is. I'm assuming is going to be toddlers, but I'm hoping, praying, Lord baby Jesus, that they don't put me with infants or toddlers. I will be happy with preschoolers because most of them don't wear diapers and they can actually have a conversation with you. Toddlers, I just, I can't not have conversation. While working with toddlers, it's mostly just repeating what they're saying back to you. Like they'll be like a bird and you're like, yeah, there's a bird, you're right. What sound does a bird make or they just like point out colors and stuff and it's like I need actual like conversation toddlers are so much better than infants I will say that infants scare the shit out of me like I just feel like they're so breakable and I'm just going to drop them and they're gonna die and like their necks will snap back like we don't have infants that young like they're basically one-year-olds or like 11 months like we don't have baby babies but I still feel like they're baby babies and I just don't want any part of that you know and they literally cannot talk they don't say anything when you say anything to them and I just I can't spend eight hours a day without conversing with anybody I can't do it I can't do it which is really ironic since I am in the early childhood education field but like I want like older kids you know so that's where I'm at with my work situation you guys don't care this is a reading vlog so I am currently reading Wings of Ebony by JL I'm almost done it honestly I'm on page 312 like there's this much left. I'm actually listening to it on audiobook. It's really good. It's the same narrator who does Angie Thomas's books. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. Like, I haven't listened to Angie Thomas's audiobooks in a while, like since Concrete Rose, which was back in like January or February or something like that. But I think that's where I know the voice from. It's about a girl named Rue who grew up in Houston. Her mom dies and she gets taken to Gazan, which is like this magical land where her father lives. And she ends up getting magical abilities, but she doesn't want any part of it because she's only known her father as being like a person who left her. She also has a sister named Tasha who wasn't able to go with her to this magical land because they have different fathers but basically on the anniversary of her mother's death she went back to Houston just to be with her sister but there's like rules she ends up touching her sister and that causes like her magic to go on the fritz and then her sister gets sentenced to death because like nobody knows about this magical land like her sister just thought that she disappeared and like left to go live with her dad and never came back but she's actually been in this magical land this is a really bad synopsis but the point is rue has magical abilities she doesn't want them she goes back to see her sister her sister gets sentenced to death and then rue has to protect her from this general guy who's like i'm gonna kill everybody so that's the story it doesn't make sense if you actually want to know what it's about then you know go to goodreads and read the synopsis but i am almost done i am enjoying it i'm probably going to give it a 3.5 i think unless something like really big happens and it gets shocking and stuff because it's a pretty predictable story in my opinion but i do have a couple of like school stuff i need to do because i'm trying to get all of my assignments done and there's about four or five left i think i have pretty much three out of the four done before i go back to work because i won't have any time to do anything so i'm trying to like do as much as possible before i go to work but yeah so i'm gonna go do some assignments but it's a partner thing and it's very hard to get my partner to sit down and work because she's also working which like is understandable she works at a school board so this is the last day of school though so maybe we can get it all done we'll see but i'm gonna go do that it's now like 6 30 and i have done nothing i've been watching single parents with my mother which is a show on disney plus which is strangely addictive it's literally just about single parents and all their kids are in well they started in kindergarten grade one but now we're on season two and so now they're in grade two it's like weirdly addictive and there's two seasons only season one was 22 episodes and season two is 23 episodes or might be the other way around point is there's a lot of episodes and we're on season two episode 10 now so and we just started the show like two days ago so clearly I have my priorities straight in what I'm doing with my life I finished Wings of Ebony I ended up getting it 3.5 out of 5 stars like I said I was going to like nothing really exciting happened after I said nothing exciting was probably gonna happen there was like a twist I didn't see coming but still not enough to give it a four like it was enjoyable but it wasn't like amazing but now I have to choose what I'm gonna read next I'm not 100% sure what I want to go with I have two options They're 
they're both arcs technically. The first one is a finished copy that the publisher sent me because they sent me an e-arc of it on NetGalley and I just never read it and then they emailed me and they were like, hey, do you want a finished copy? And I was like, yeah, sure. So now I have the finished copy and I still haven't read it. So we're gonna get on that. But that one is This Is How We Fly by Anna Miriano and it's about this group of friends who are about to go off to college and they're kind of like growing apart. One girl ends up getting grounded. She is looking for like a loophole because it's summertime and she's like, I wanna go hang out with people. So she joins the muggle Quidditch team and she like meets a whole bunch of new people and it's like her discovering herself. So I'm assuming it's just like a, you know, rediscover yourself, make new friends kind of book. And then my second option is Tell Me When You Feel Something by Vicki Grant. This is like a YA thriller. It says the perfect part-time job turns deadly for teens working as simulated patients at the local med school. Everyone has something to hide and no one is safe in this contemporary YA thriller that exposes the dark reality of hashtag me too in the world of medicine. Kind of leaning more towards this is about this girl whose friend goes into a coma. Everyone thinks it's like an overdose but then people are saying it's not an overdose and like they're getting questioned by the cops and everybody has something to hide and they're not telling anybody what happened. It says there's interwining and conflicting narratives. We love an unreliable narrator on this channel and a twisted story unfolds of trust betrayed as we sift through the seemingly innocent events leading up to the tragic night. Perhaps simulated patients aren't the only people pretending to be something they're not. So I think I'm leaning more towards this. I mean, I have them both on audio, Book. so I mean this one's an eight part and then this one is 11 hours so if I want to like round out my like reading this month I'm currently at 19 books but technically only 18 because one of them is a textbook for college which I had to read front to back so you know I added it to my Goodreads goal but since it's June 25th today I have until Wednesday to get that number up to 20 so I have a nice like even number to do my wrap up with but I go back to work on Monday so less reading time so I'm probably gonna read this one because it's shorter and then like read a graphic novel or something because those are easy and then I'll have 20 books so this is my next read I've decided and then like I'll read this one in July good plan oh genius but I'm gonna go watch more of single parents which is probably all I'm gonna be doing tonight. And then I'll get back to reading tomorrow, maybe. Hi, it's now 12.40 on Saturday. Uh, we literally watched every single single parents episode that is on Disney Plus. So, you know, two seasons, 44 episodes, I think, 45. I can't do math. Whatever 23 plus 22 is, that's how many episodes we watched. But now I just had our Roomba, Mrs. Doubtfire, clean my room. So now that she's done in here, I can actually film an update. So I started Tell Me When You Feel Something earlier this morning. I'm now on page 121. It's really average, <laughs> which I don't really know how to feel about because I thought I was really gonna like it, but it's just very slow burn right now. And we're trying to figure out what happened happened to Viv who is the girl who's now in the coma and everybody thinks that it was a drug overdose. She's like a closeted alcoholic and her friend Davida who isn't really her friend from what we've learned so far in the first little bit of it. She's like convinced that she's not a bad seed, she's not an alcoholic, she doesn't even drink so why would she take drugs? But then there's a video going around that shows her taking a pill and then like foaming from the mouth and like goes into this coma. Yeah, we're kind of just learning the backstory right now. It's like a jumping timeline from before the party where she took this pill and then like after the party as well. Not during the party, just before and after. And it's like everybody trying to like speculate what's happening. There's also transcripts from like police interviews and stuff. I don't know. I'm. It's not like grasping my attention like I thought it would like I am enjoying it but it's not really that interesting does that make sense like it's probably just gonna be like a very average three I'll probably finish it I'm about halfway through right now like a little bit less than halfway but it's flying by really really quickly but like I said kind of boring so yeah the plan is to just finish this today and then probably start the this is how we fly book 
or I'm also considering starting the adventure zone. This is the third part of the series. It's a graphic novel that is based off of a podcast that the McElroy brothers and their father have about their Dungeons and Dragons games and this is like all their characters and they go on like these Dungeons and Dragons adventures but it's like an adult graphic novel. I am obsessed with this series. I love it so much. The fourth one is coming out very soon but I recently picked this up because it was on sale because they're like ridiculously expensive like graphic novels are so expensive this one is worth it so I think I got it for like $12 when it's usually in Canada at least $26.99 which ends up being like basically $30 so it was on a hella sale so we picked it up and I'm actually really excited to be with these characters again because I just love them like this one his name is Magnus and he is just the epitome of a golden retriever in a human body like he's my favorite thing ever so that's probably the plan finish this one and then probably start this one finish this and then we'll move on to this one because then hopefully i'm at the goal of 20 books so that my wrap up is nicely wrapped up you know what i'm saying i just finished tell me when you feel something by vicky grant and i don't know why this is still in there because i finished it but i'm giving it a three out of five stars it ended up being super predictable the ending and it was just kind of a bummer because i called it and i was like oh i bet you this is what happened and then that's exactly what happened but there was like a little twist that i didn't see coming but obviously i can't tell you what it is because that would be a spoiler but yeah this is done three out of five I think I'm gonna start listening to this now, but my airpods are also dead right now So they're charging in here and therefore I don't think I will be listening to the fly book the Hogwarts the Quidditch Whatever you want to call it. This is how we fly. So I think I'm gonna start the adventure zone my thumb is like really sore because i got a new game on my switch which is called cooking tycoons 2 i don't know if you'll be able to see that did anybody ever play those games that you would like serve customers and like have to make them their food in a certain amount of time and like they would get angrier the longer you made them wait kind of thing it's one of those games so it's very like mindless like, don't have to think while playing thing it was on sale for like two dollars and literally all i have on my switch is animal crossing so i bought two new games i bought that one which... and then i also bought another game which is called best friend forever i don't know it's that one but it's basically you adopt a dog and then you take care of it and it like reminds me of like nintendogs but it has like a twist where you're like a person and you go on like dates with other people and like there's an app called woofer which i'm assuming is supposed to be like tinder and you adopt a dog because everybody in your neighborhood owns a dog and you have to have a dog to use this dating app and you just moved there and so you decide that you are also going to adopt a dog and then it's just like you training this dog and going on dates and it's also another mindless game but i am loving it so yeah those are the two new games that i've mostly been wasting my life on so far but yeah um my like i said my thumb is hurting from all the like joy stick movement so we're gonna take a break and read this one now so what did you get what did you buy i didn't buy anything will got me something so oh. well you should be opening it that means well he says it's for surprise i'm assuming it's a book it's not for me well I need content. <laughs> well, you you're under a blanket. Nobody knows she's I'm naked. I'm not naked. <laughs> but why is it Will buying me stuff? Um, I because Will it. loves me and not you. What is that? I'm not gonna give it to you for that. I color. want it. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> it's about a psychotic child. Oh, it's about you. Yeah. Such a good boyfriend. <laughs> It's Sunday now. I'm waiting for Will to pick me up because we're gonna go back to his place so I can see my Remy Boo, my little puppy dog. That's why my hair is really wet because I just took a shower because hygiene is important. But I figured I would 
update you guys on my reading progress. I got on to page 99 of the Adventure Zone. I love these characters. I love this story. Like they are just so much fun. Like I said, it's an adult graphic novel. So there's a lot of, you know, nudity and swearing and it's just like a good time. Like there's literally just like this dude's butt hanging out there. I definitely think that it's like a very underrated graphic novel. Like it is just one. Honestly, it's my favorite. It's my favorite graphic novel. I don't know why I'm saying one of my favorite. It's my all time favorite series. And then for This Is How We Fly, I am on page 345. So I'm almost done. There's like that much left of it. I think it's going to be a three, honestly. It has very good discussion about like gender identity and feminism and like it's it's given some good points but i'm so bored like nothing is happening it's basically just these two girls this one is ellen and this one is melissa they're like bffs but then they're not bffs and they're growing apart and they're making new friends and like ellen fights with her stepmother a lot she's going off to college soon and she just feels like her parents don't want her in their space anymore so she's like dealing with that and it's just it's boring like i just want some action like something explode or something which obviously is not going to happen it's a contemporary like coming of age story but give me something exciting because it's 345 pages in so far and i feel like nothing has happened i feel like this book could have been cut down so much it's still got the same ideas across maybe i'm just picky but yeah probably a three out of five but yeah now i'm just waiting it's 8 50 right now will said he'd be here at nine o'clock will that be the truth probably not but he said he's bringing me coffee and breakfast so I will let it slide because the weight of my heart is coffee and food and books and he got me a book yesterday so we found a keeper ladies and gentlemen we went to get Starbucks and I was so excited because I get to get my venti coffee and you know what they gave me you know what they gave me they gave her a smaller size a fucking grande and you know what they gave Will a fucking venti I am so sad and I said at the window but but we said venti and you know what will said nothing he said nothing he said absolutely nothing and just drove away but then he got me timbits to make up for it but he forgot the timbits so he had to go inside and go get the timbits. <laughs> i'm a hot mess <laughs> <laughs> because he got his order no problem don't worry he got his little wrap and then drove away without my timbits Are you so done? <laughs> clearly we can tell who loves who more in this place. Who loves who more? Who pays for everything? That doesn't qualify love. Sure it does. Qualify? Does when you're gift giving apparently. Oh, I told him that every time he buys me a present it renews his subscription to uh, me. So <laughs> Every weekend. But he's moving far away. No, so I'm not moving. <laughs> his subscription. I don't have the job yet. <laughs> his subscription will not be renewing. That is not true. <laughs> I'll send her books via post. Just kidding. We're keeping me for a little bit longer anyways. Says who? Says me. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> are you breaking up with me right now? You're my COVID project. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the babies! The babies! The babies! Oh, he's not even doing it. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, you have a sleeper. <laughs> What are you growling for? Doing it to the camera. Oh, oh, you have one too. Oh, good. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> he got one too. He's like, Roscoe has one. I have one. But now we're playing fetch with it. Come here, Roscoe. Hi, Remy. No, that's not you. Oh, squeaky squeak. He's like a squeak toy. What are you doing? Remy's coming on a road <laughs> trip with us. He's like in the car. <laughs> Remy. <laughs> oh, turn on the blinker. He's such a good driver. Probably feels a cold air. We went back. But they gave you the wrong size again. No, I asked for Grande this time. I thought Grande was the big one. No, Venti's the big one. Because Grande in French is large. Oh, look at you, you old bilingual king. I was going to say bisexual. <laughs> that too. But I got a coconut drink this time and he got the exact same thing yes because i don't like to try new things actually i was looking at the menu real hard eyeing Ooh. it down oh there's a big bump hold on Ooh. eyeing it down and i was like do i get that but it was literally just the dragon fruit without the lemonade and i was like it's pretty much the exact it a, same no it's without the mango so it's dragon fruit. right 
but it's made with uh, dragon fruit and not a lemonade part. There was no lemonade on it. So it was just dragon fruit, that's what it was called? Yes, it was dragon fruit drink or something. I don't know. We'll go back and get it next time. Okay. We also got Oreos. And Double stuff. And a crunchy bar. Because apparently this weekend we're going to be really unhealthy. Yay. This weekend? <laughs> okay, every weekend, but... This one's brighter. It's a bright pink. I, I like that color though. I do too. Hello. Hi, we're going for a nature walk. A hike. It's not a hike. We're a hike a is hike. like physically laborly intensive. Is that the I right word? I am physically laborly Okay, tired. well look, there's a bench. Sit down. I don't want to. I'm okay, just then quit, quit your bitching. Are we allowed to say that? Bitching? Yeah, okay, you said it. Never mind. I say fuck on my channel all the time. You do. Well, you don't I'm... watch my videos, so you don't know. I watch your videos if I'm in them. Well, are you going to watch this one then? Of course. Hey. It's a really good angle. Okay. That's nice. Is this? Oh, wow. Wow. What have I been telling you? But your arm gets tired. But the angle. See, you just look so much better from up high. Oh, yeah. It looks. Rather than right here. Okay. So we're standing here by the river and Jay spotted an animal of such rare occurrences that we just have to show you guys. It is the majestic neon water snake of, I was going to say Antarctica, but we're not in Antarctica. <laughs> What are you doing? Go away. Hi. <laughs> We're on a bridge. Oh my god, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I almost pushed you in the water. This is apparently the same creek that goes through his It goes backyard through the backyard. It's called Whiteman's Creek. It's called you're rich and have a creek in your backyard. We're not rich. <laughs> we found a woodpecker. We didn't find a woodpecker. A woodpecker hole. That's crazy. I think so, anyways. I don't think so. That's somebody like hacking at it. No. There's no way. Well, we'll ask Grandpa, he'll know. Will brought a friend home. Well, not on purpose. What are we naming him? Stuart. Little? Little Stuart. Okay, you can get him off now. Wait, you don't want to touch it? I don't want to touch it. You're the bug person in the relationship. You're such a pussy. I know. Come here. Look at him, back up, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Sir. Oh. He's like, nah! <laughs> like a true man in a relationship. You're welcome. Thank you, dear. Pussy. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, bye bye. Bye. Thanks. I love you. I love you too. Is that what you're waiting for? Hi, Ram.